Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing Auras, a group of elite and highly trained witches and wizards that work for the Department of Magical Law Enforcement inside the Ministry of Magic, or if you're in the US, for the Magical Congress of the United States of America. Comparable to, say, the Secret Service in the Muggle world, Auras are responsible for investigating and handling any and all crimes pertaining to dark wizards and dark magic. Auras are the wizarding world's best defense against the practitioners of the dark arts. We're well versed in offensive magic because our very lives depend on it. It takes courage, wit, and guile. Not many have the stomach for it, do you? Auras play a crucial role in maintaining peace and combating dark forces in the wizarding world, serving as an essential pillar of magical law enforcement. They stand as a symbol of courage, skill, and unwavering dedication. The origins of Auras trace back to the tumultuous period of the 18th century, when the wizarding world faced numerous threats and internal conflicts. This era, marked by dark wizard supremacy and oppression, laid the foundation for the formation of the Aura profession. As wizards and witches became increasingly concerned about the misuse of magic, an urgent need arose for skilled individuals who could safeguard the magical community and bring justice to wrongdoers. From quelling goblin rebellions to investigating the illegal trade of magical creatures, the Auras were the closest thing to a standing army that the Ministry would ever mobilize. But for a long time, the duties of an Aura, the apprehension of dark wizards and other criminals, was just grouped into the role of other Ministry officials. That meant other members of the official wizarding government, especially those within the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, fulfilled the day-to-day -day tasks that Auras would eventually do. But thanks to the work of Eldritch Diggory, the Minister for Magic at the time, the jobs of wizards and witches at the Ministry of Magic eventually became more specialized, and instead of bullying your average office worker into enforcing magical laws, Diggory created the Aura Office following his launch of the first ever Aura Recruitment Program. And ever since that fateful day in the early 18th century, the Auras have gone on to become one of the most feared and beloved aspects of the Ministry of Magic. Today, several centuries later, we're going to be honoring the Auras of the Wizarding World by taking a look at each one by name and recognizing their contributions to the magical community as a whole. Taking things a step further, I'm also going to be ranking them by their perceived magical ability. This list will include Auras working for the Ministry of Magic in the UK, as well as US Auras working for the Magical Congress for the United States of America. It will also include names from all Wizarding World material. For some of these names, I could write a book full of information, but for others, I really had to scrape the barrel, so bear with me. There's a fair bit of ground to cover here, so let's dive in. Venusia Crickley was a competent and likeable British witch that served as Minister for Magic from 1903 to 1912. However, prior to her service as Minister, Venusia worked in the Aura Department. Tragically, Venusia died at a relatively young age from a mandrake-related gardening accident. Aesop Sharp's partner, an unnamed wizard who we know very little about, was, as you may have guessed, the crime-fighting partner of British wizard Aesop Sharp. This wizard was killed when he and Aesop tracked a suspect to a harbour in Scarborough, where they were ambushed. Mordecai Berrycloth was a British wizard employed by the Ministry of Magic under then-department head Harry Potter. Berrycloth was described as being charisma-impaired, suggesting that he was a rather dull individual. However, he was quite knowledgeable in terms of the art of spellcasting. Achilles Tolliver was an American wizard who worked for the Magical Congress of the United States of America in the 1920s. Tolliver worked alongside Porpentina Goldstein, whom he briefly dated. Very little is known about Tolliver or his abilities. Brownfoot is a relatively minor character in Harry Potter lore, who is part of the squad of Auras stationed in Hogsmeade. Brownfoot, along with a few others, were placed there in order to help heighten security at Hogwarts during the 1996 to 1997 school year. Savage was part of the same entourage stationed in Hogsmeade to protect Hogwarts. It can be safely assumed that, due to the importance of their mission, all of the wizards stationed in Hogsmeade had an extensive arsenal of offensive and defensive spells, as well as a considerable amount of experience dealing with dark wizards. John Dawlish was a British Aura working for the Ministry 
that could often be seen by the side of Cornelius Fudge. He's primarily known for his persistent attempts to take care of Dumbledore under the orders of the Ministry of Magic. Despite his dogged determination, Dawlish is often outsmarted and overpowered by Dumbledore and other skilled wizards. Some feel that his repeated failures highlight his lack of exceptional skill and strategic thinking as an aura. However, Dawlish has been described by Dumbledore himself as an excellent aura. I'm of the impression that he was just given particularly difficult assignments. After all, Dumbledore is the most powerful wizard of all time. Neville Longbottom, a Gryffindor student at Hogwarts, grew from an initially timid and clumsy young boy into a courageous and formidable wizard, undergoing a significant amount of character development throughout the series. Neville is known for his proficiency in herbology and his ability to stand up against dark wizards, exemplified by his role in the Battle of Hogwarts. After graduating from Hogwarts and an impressive display at the Battle of Hogwarts, Neville pursues a career as an aura. In addition to becoming an aura, Neville also follows his dreams by becoming a professor of herbology at Hogwarts. Ron Weasley, one of Harry's closest friends and member of the Weasley clan, joins the aura department at the Ministry of Magic after the Second Wizarding War. Although Ron occasionally struggles with self-confidence, he possesses a strategic mind and showcases bravery during crucial moments. Ron's skill set includes proficiency in strategic planning, as well as his proficiency in wizard chess, which indicates his ability to think ahead and make calculated decisions under pressure. His unwavering commitment to doing what is right and his ability to remain cool under pressure make him an effective aura. After many years as an aura, Ron eventually leaves his post to join his brother George in operating Weasley's Wizarding Weezers. Williamson was an aura only briefly in the Harry Potter series. Not much is known about his background or specific accomplishments as an aura. He was described as wearing scarlet red robes and sporting a long ponytail when Harry Potter first met him. Notably, he was the first aura to see Lord Voldemort just before he fled the Ministry of Magic in 1996 after the Battle of the Department of Mysteries. Following this encounter, he was sent along with Dawlish to go and deal with the captured Death Eaters. To me, the importance of the task to which he was entrusted suggests that he was quite a talented wizard. Sarana Wilkinson was an aura who served the Magical Congress of the United States of America. A gifted spellcaster, she notably provided spellcasting tips to members of the Statute of Secrecy Task Force in order to help them better utilize the weakening hex in combat. An international visit from the American aura, Sarana Wilkinson, leaves you with some very useful tips increasing the amount of damage done with a successful critical cast. Alice and Frank Longbottom were auras and members of the original Order of the Phoenix. They were also the mum and dad of Neville Longbottom. As auras, both Alice and Frank were highly accomplished and highly respected, known for their bravery and skill in combat, as well as their proficient use of defensive magic. Unfortunately, after their capture and torture by Death Eaters, Alice and Frank were left permanently incapacitated, their tragic end serves as a reminder of the dangers and sacrifices that Auras face in the line of duty. The original Twelve were a group of twelve wizard volunteers from the United States who trained as Auras to serve the Magical Congress of the United States of America. In the late 17th century, things were tough for magical people in what would later become the United States. It was a particularly hostile environment. Scourers, nefarious bounty hunters and crooks, roamed the continent preying on their fellow magical beings for personal gain. On top of that, the area was teeming with wizarding criminals who had fled to America from Europe hoping to stay clear of authorities. Because the region had no established form of law enforcement, it made it an easy place to escape to. But then came the Salem Witch Trials, which tipped the scales. At this stage, the wizarding community in America banded together and established the Magical Congress of the United States of America in 1693, allowing them to create their own system of government and order. The first wizard elected president for Makusa, Josiah Jackson, made recruiting and training auras his top priority. The first few volunteers, all twelve of them, faced immense risks and challenges but showed impressive bravery. As a result, they and their descendants earned the enduring respect of North America's magical community. Though only two of the original twelve auras lived well into old age, their legacy lives on. These 12 auras were Theodard Fontaine, Wilhelm Fischer, 
Gondolphus Graves, Robert Grimsditch, Mary Jauncey, Carlos Lopez, Mungo Macduff, Cormac O'Brien, Abraham Potter, Batilda Roche, Helmut Weiss, and Charity Wilkinson. Today, only two of these original twelve remain, Charity Wilkinson and Theodard Fontaine. However, the legacy of all twelve of these brave auras will stand the test of time. There isn't much information available on each aura individually, so in terms of power rankings, I'm going to have to put them all together. That said, with all of the adversity these twelve wizards faced, I think it's safe to say that they were quite a talented group. There's also one name in the group that particularly stands out, one Abraham Potter. It's worth noting that Abraham was born into the American branch of the Potter family, which also originated from Ignotus Peveril. This makes Abraham a relative of Harry. Aesop Sharp was a British wizard who worked as an aura for the Ministry of Magic. He later served as the potions master for Hogwarts School. After graduating from Hogwarts himself, Aesop quickly set his sight on the aura office and began working for them straight away. As his career progressed, Aesop and his partner, who I mentioned earlier, valiantly pursued their duties, fearlessly undertaking dangerous assignments in the name of protecting the wizarding world. However, fate had a cruel twist in store. During one mission, tragedy struck as they were ambushed, resulting in a grievous injury for Aesop and the heartbreaking loss of his partner. The aftermath of this devastating incident cast a shadow on Aesop's future prospects, as it became clear that desk duties and endless paperwork awaited him. Realizing the restriction this would impose on his adventurous spirit, Aesop made a life-altering decision. He chose to bid farewell to the Aura Office, and turned his attention toward imparting his wisdom to the budding witches and wizards of the next generation, right at his beloved alma mater. Sharp was particularly gifted in charms, potions, and dueling. Nymphadora Tonks, also known as Tonks, was a half-bud witch and loyal member of the Order of the Phoenix. As an aura, Tonks possessed a full arsenal of impressive skills necessary for the role. One of her most notable abilities was being a metamorph magus, allowing her to change her appearance at will. This talent made her a valuable asset in undercover operations and gathering crucial information while remaining undetected. Tonks also showcased expertise in defense against the dark arts, known for her proficiency in a multitude of defensive spells. Throughout her career, Tonks demonstrated bravery, courage, and a willingness to take risks, earning her the admiration and respect of her colleagues. Despite her occasional clumsiness, she didn't let it hinder her effectiveness as an aura and remained determined in her duties. Cass Carneras was an American witch and the captain of auras for the Magical Congress of the United States of America in the 2020s. Unfortunately, there isn't much available information out there on Cass. However, we do know that she was in charge of training other auras in the art of dueling. We can also safely assume that, since she came into a position of authority within Makusa, that she served with some sort of distinction. For these reasons, I've decided to place her higher on the list. E. A. Lemus was an American wizard who worked as both the Federal Identity Commissioner and Chief Aura at the Magical Congress of the United States of America. The former role involved keeping records of Makusa employees and certifying employee identification. As Chief Aura, they were responsible for overseeing the work of American Auras. Based on the amount of responsibility on E. A. Lemus's shoulders, it's fair to assume that he was a fairly accomplished wizard in his own right. M. P. Carneris was an American wizard and Captain of Auras for the Magical Congress of the United States of America. MP was likely related to Cass Carneris. Like some of the others on this list, little is known about Carneris other than the fact that he attained the rank of Aura Captain. For this reason, he's earned a higher position on this list. M. L. Minus was an American wizard who hit the top of the totem pole and achieved the highest honor rank of Aura Commissioner within the Magical Congress of the United States of America. Given the responsibility associated with this role, it's likely that M. L. Minus was an incredibly accomplished Aura with a sharp mind and extensive skill set. Harry James Potter, the Chosen One, is a legendary figure in the wizarding community. As the survivor of Lord Voldemort's deadly curse as an infant, Harry grew up to become a courageous and resilient wizard. He played a pivotal role in the defeat of the Dark Lord during the Battle of Hogwarts, eventually becoming an Aura to continue fighting against Dark Forces and ensuring the safety of the magical world. 
As an Aura, Harry displayed a unique skill set that made him an exceptional member of the magical law enforcement. From his impressive dueling skills to his versatile spellcasting abilities, Harry possessed the prowess of a formidable wizard. What truly set Harry apart, however, was his immense bravery and unwavering determination. He never shied away from dangerous missions or took the easy path. Harry fearlessly faced the unknown, embracing the responsibility to protect his fellow witches and wizards. This resilience and courage made him a respected aura and a symbol of hope within the magical community. Furthermore, Harry's experiences as the boy who lived granted him invaluable knowledge about dark magic and the workings of Voldemort's followers. This insight allowed him to understand the mindset and strategies of those he pursued as an aura, making him a valuable asset in the fight against dark forces. During his time as an aura, Harry served with so much distinction that he was promoted to head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement at the Ministry of Magic, a feat he achieved at a relatively young age. However, despite Harry's illustrious track record, he did get an awful lot of help from the people around him. He also just had a lot of plain old good luck. For these reasons, he isn't higher on the list. Poor Pantina, or Tina Goldstein, was a gifted aura and a former investigator for the Magical Congress of the United States of America, Makusa. She was dedicated to her job and showed remarkable bravery during her time as an aura, displaying immense skill in dueling and non-verbal magic. However, Tina's passion for justice occasionally led her to take risks that got her into trouble. Despite some setbacks and challenges in her career as an aura, Tina remained a fierce and determined fighter. She worked tirelessly to protect the wizarding community. As far as magical abilities are concerned, Tina had the full arsenal. She was versed in charms, transfiguration, divination, defense against the dark arts, apparition, and more. She even held her own, momentarily, in a duel against Gellert Grindelwald. Though I'm not sure Grindelwald was exercising much of his power. Percival Graves was an American wizard who had a distinguished career as an aura, eventually becoming the director of magical security and the head of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement at the Magical Congress of the United States of America. He was a member of the influential wizarding Graves family, and he followed in the footsteps of his ancestor, Gondolphus Graves, who was one of the original 12 auras of Makusa. As an aura, Percival Graves possessed a formidable skill set that made him a highly effective and respected member of the magical law enforcement community. He demonstrated exceptional knowledge and expertise in enforcing magical law, upholding justice, and protecting the wizarding world from dark forces. He was well known for his astute observation skills, strategic thinking, and his ability to analyze complex situations. However, as powerful as Graves was, he was no match for the dark wizard Gellert Grindelwald, who successfully impersonated him in the Fantastic Beasts film. It's unknown whether Grindelwald killed or simply imprisoned Graves. Theseus Scamander was an English wizard and aura for the British Ministry of Magic. He was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Scamander, and the older brother of famed magizoologist Newt Scamander. Theseus gained recognition as a war hero after his involvement in the First World War, and was later promoted to the head of the British Aura Office. As an Aura, Theseus Commander possessed a wide range of skills that made him an exceptional law enforcement wizard. He had extensive knowledge of magical law and regulations, which made him a valuable asset in upholding justice and maintaining order in the wizarding world. However, it was Theseus' proficiency in combat and defensive magic that played a key role in his successful career as an Aura. His experiences during the First World War further enhanced his courage and resilience, as he played a vital role in the battle against Gellert Grindelwald and the global wizarding war that followed. Gawain Robard was a British wizard who served as an aura for the British Ministry of Magic during the Second Wizarding War. He later became head of the British Aura Office, succeeding Rufus Scrimger, who became the Minister for Magic. As an aura, Gawain Robard proved to be a fierce fighter against the Dark Arts battling against Lord Voldemort and his followers during the Second Wizarding War, even during the Ministry's losing battle against them. Though the Ministry fell, Gawain was able to survive, later returning to his role as head of the Aura Office after Voldemort had been defeated. The fact that Gawain was put in charge of the Aura Office during such a volatile time suggests that he was a particularly gifted leader, and likely a very powerful wizard in his own right. 
Her Feistus Gore was one of the earliest auras and served as Minister for Magic from 1752 to 1770. Gore's successful tenure as the Minister for Magic attests to his many qualities that made him an excellent aura and leader. He was a skilled strategist who was able to put down revolts by magical beings, despite their increased threat level during the Goblin Rebellions in the mid 18th century. He also officiated the infamous broom race from Aberdeen to Rome, showcasing his ability to handle high pressure situations and uphold the dignity of the wizarding community. Gore was also responsible for undertaking the renovation and reinforcement of Azkaban prison. Gore's quick thinking and innovative approach to problem solving set him apart as one of the best auras of his time. Kingsley Shacklebolt was a British pureblood wizard, Order of the Phoenix member, powerful aura, and later Minister for Magic. As a high ranking aura, Kingsley displayed a very powerful and balanced arsenal of magical capabilities. Shacklebolt's fellow Order members held him in high regard, and even Lord Voldemort himself considered Kingsley to be a powerful wizard. If that isn't an indicator of his level of power, then I don't know what is. Shacklebolt exhibited natural cunning, outstanding dueling ability, full defense against the dark arts proficiency, charms mastery, transfiguration mastery, potions mastery, herbology mastery, apparition mastery, flying mastery, and more. He truly was a master of all, and was able to comfortably hold his own against at least two Death Eaters at once. In fact, during the Battle of the Seven Potters, Shacklebolt was chased by five Death Eaters, and even though he was primarily focused on protecting Hermione, Shacklebolt was able to stun two of them and escape. As far as auras come, Kingsley is one of the best. Rufus Scrimger was a British pureblood wizard, veteran aura, and later Minister for Magic. Scrimger spent most of his life as an aura, defeating dark witches and wizards for years, and it was through years and years of experience that Scrimger came to achieve his level of magical power. Scrimger was, in Dumbledore's words, a man of action, and was far more decisive than his predecessor, Cornelius Fudge. Before becoming Minister for Magic, Rufus was the Head of Auras. This title alone speaks to his ability to handle himself, his level of expertise, and his inherent magical capability. As head of a division that focuses on capturing dark wizards, we can only assume that his magical proficiency was truly a step above those underneath him. In perhaps the most relevant testament to Scrimger's capabilities, he was able to put up a valiant effort against the Dark Lord, Voldemort, one of the most powerful wizards to have ever lived. Though Scrimger was defeated, giving someone as powerful as Voldemort a fight is an extremely notable accomplishment in and of itself. Last but certainly not least, we have Alistair Mad-Eye Moody. Moody was a Scottish pure-blood wizard, and is considered by many to be the most famous aura of all time. He was an Order of the Phoenix member, Dark Wizard Catcher, and Warrior. Moody served with great distinction during the First Wizarding War, losing an eye, leg, and nose in battle against evildoers. Moody is personally responsible for a large number of the witches and wizards in Azkaban, and this earned him quite the reputation amongst the Dark Wizard community. Alistair Moody was hired as Defense Against the Dark Arts Professor by Dumbledore in 1994, but before starting his new posting, was ambushed in his home by Barty Crouch Jr. and Peter Pettigrew. Though he fought valiantly, the surprising nature of the attack led to his eventual downfall, and he was trapped inside of his very own magical trunk. It is my personal opinion that Barty Crouch Jr. is one of the most powerful Death Eaters of all time, and even though we don't see him exercising his magical capabilities too much, I think that he had a lot more in him than what we were shown. For this reason, it makes sense that, along with Pettigrew, Crouch Jr. was able to capture the revered Alistair Moody. Moody was incredibly brave, but also extremely powerful, particularly in his prime. Many feel as though his abilities may have peaked during the First Wizarding War, and that he had dropped down a peg by the time the Second Wizarding War came around, the result of years of hard battling. Similar to Shacklebolt, Moody was regarded as one of the most powerful members of the Order of the Phoenix by Lord Voldemort himself. For this reason, Voldemort suspected that Moody was likely the wizard protecting Harry during the Battle of the Seven Potters, and was initially targeted by Voldemort for this reason. It was only after Moody was defeated that Voldemort pursued Shacklebolt, which tells me that Voldemort likely felt that Moody was the more powerful of the two. Moody's magical arsenal was not limited in any way, and he had no holes in his armor. 
He was a master of dark arts, defense against the dark arts, dueling, charms, transfiguration, potions, herbology, apparition, flying, nonverbal magic, and even occlumency. For all of the reasons listed above, I feel that he was the most powerful aura of all time. And that's it for today's video. Through this comprehensive exploration of the power and prowess of every aura in the wizarding world, we have delved deep into the magical abilities, skills, and achievements of these brave defenders of the wizarding community. From the legendary auras who fought in the first wizarding war, to the modern day heroes who battled against the resurgence of dark forces, no aura has been forgotten. Ranking auras can be a daunting task, as each individual brings their own strengths and weaknesses to the table. Some possess exceptional spellcasting abilities, while others shine in strategic thinking and leadership. There are those who excel in combat and dueling, and others who specialize in the study and containment of magical creatures. The diversity of skills amongst auras makes it challenging to definitively determine who is the most powerful, so in that respect, I've just tried my best. How would you rank these powerful witches and wizards? Let me know down in the comment section below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams, and forget to live.